Good evening. It's good to have you here. It's good to know what you're doing this evening. Uh, but it is good that we're all here gathered together. If you will bow with me, we'll have an opening word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we're able to gather here. Lord, there are those gathered on the phone. Lord, there are those gathered uh, watching the live stream. Lord, being able to worship with us in that way, uh, praying with us, studying your word together. And Lord, we just pray that we would learn more about your word and that we become more faithful and obedient to you. Lord, may we live our lives out of service to you and may this evening be a benefit, Lord, for our spiritual walk with you. And may we be able to encourage one another as well as we're gathered here together. Lord, we're so thankful for all the blessings in our lives and just pray that you be with those that are struggling. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I found, I found out about two minutes ago I was leading the singing. And Hannah already had my songs picked out for me. So... Blame her if you don't like the songs. <laughs> Amazing Grace. Oh. Wrong note, sorry. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper for those that weren't here this morning. So I just remind you of the uh, great mission that uh, Christ had of coming to the earth, giving his life on Calvary. And of course, the, the reason that we do this is in accordance to 1 Corinthians 11, to do it in remembrance of his death. So would you bow with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of coming to you and uh, this attitude of prayer that we could give you thanks for this bread, which represents your son's body. We ask you to be with those who partake, that they do so remembering his sacrifice. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Continue to give our thanks now as we uh, go to God in prayer again. Father, we thank you for this fruit of the vine. We ask you to help us to remember and appreciate the sacrifice you made for us. We thank you for, for this means that we have to recall that sacrifice. Through your son's name we pray, amen. And I'd remind you, if you didn't uh, have your contribution this morning, your trays are still back there, so next song. To Canaan's 
land, I'm on my way. To Canaan's land, I'm on my way, where the soul never dies. My darkest night will turn to death, where the soul never dies. No sad farewell, no tear dim die, where all is love, and the soul never die. A rose is blooming there for me, where the soul never dies, and I Never dies, no sad farewell, no tear dim dies, where all is love and the soul never dies. A love light beams across the fall where the soul never dies. It shines to love the shores of home where the soul never dies. No sad farewell, no tear dim dies. Where all is love and the soul never dies. dies, and everlasting joys I'll reap where the soul never dies. No sad farewell, no tear dim dies, where all is love, and the soul never dies. I'm on my way to that fair land where the soul never dies, where there will be no parting hand and the soul never dies, no sad farewell, no tear in dark, where It is good to see you all here in person. Again, I know there are a few watching online. I think my father said something about watching this evening. Uh, and then David may mention that Anne Rose is on the phone call and perhaps others as well. And so, again, it's a great opportunity that we're here uh, and being able to study God's Word. Now, last week we did Sunday evening. We talked about worship, and that was part one. Uh, and this will be part two to finish uh, discussing this before moving on about prayer and things like that. But if you remember last week, we talked about worship starting from the very beginning. We talked about Old Testament worship, those things you found uh, that the people did of that day and time. We talked then about synagogue worship, which comes into the New Testament era. And we see that being practiced in the Gospels by Jews of that day. And then we got to look at no longer the past, but something that we as Christians today get to look forward to, and that was a heavenly worship. And so that, again, truly was, for me, the greatest part about that lesson of looking forward uh, to know that there's worship and being uh, near God and how we ought to uh, be able to sing to God and so humble and thankful towards God. So this evening, we're going to cover a different subject concerning worship, and that's going to be our attitudes, our mindset in worship. How is it uh, that we should, what kind of attitude should we have 
towards worship, as we gather together, as we come to study God's Word, as we come to sing, as we come and offer prayers, as we have uh, an opportunity to give back to the Lord. Here's three areas, three things that we ought to have in our mindset. The three things we're going to cover is that first, we ought to be reverent towards God. We ought to realize who it is that we're worshiping. And once we understand who it is that we're worshiping, then we can humble ourselves and honor God the way he ought to be honored. So firstly, we must be reverent towards God in our worship. The second thing in our mindset and our attitude is to be joyful. Being able to worship God ought to be a joyful thing. Again, once we understand who it is that God is and we understand that our blessings come from God, then that ought to cause us to be joyous when we realize that he takes time to hear us as we talked this morning about prayer. As we realize all the things that he's done and yet that he cares for me, yet he cares for you, that ought to cause us to be joyful that we get to worship Him, to sing songs, that He hears our singing, that He hears our prayers, the blessings, the thanksgivings, concerns in our lives. And lastly, we ought to have an attitude, a mindset of being obedient to to God. If we're going to worship Him, if we're going to be reverent, and those two perhaps overlap a little, but we ought to be obedient to God. Let it not be about the preferences that I have, not be about the preferences you have, But yet, God has, and we talked about that last week, perhaps, in noticing those things that were given for a specific time in the Old Testament. Those things that were done uh, in the synagogue and how they met daily. And so it is that we as Christians today, we ought to be obedient. And we know, we can know from God's Word what that means to be obedient to Him in worship today. If you have your Bibles with you, we're going to take a look at Exodus chapter 3, 5 through 6, and understanding a uh, reverence towards God. This is the example of Moses and uh, having to be reverent before God. Exodus chapter 3, 5 through 6. Exodus 3, 5 through 6, it reads this. Then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. He was in the presence there, being uh, in close vicinity of that bush uh, that he is now, and he can hear the voice talking to him. He's being told this is a holy place. It's set apart. You need to remove your sandals. Moses makes the decision to hide his face. He knows the honor and glory bestowed upon God. He's speaking to the angel of the Lord through the burning bush. You back up a few verses, you see that. But then we clearly see here the voice addressing him says that I am the God of your father. So this is God in that bush, in that burning bush, speaking to Moses. Moses is told to keep his distance, take off his sandals. And again, on his own choice, Moses uh, decides to hide his face. There's this reverence uh, of listening to that voice, understanding who it is making the request to him. And so he's going to be obedient. He's going to honor those requests being made of him. So it is, as we come before God, we ought to imagine that word holy, set apart. And that can be at this time as we're gathered in this building, as we think about just this time gathered together. And again, we've been able to meet uh, and worship and study God's word by phone call. We've been able to do that outside. But that time gathered together is holy time. It's time that is set apart, that's set, set apart from the rest of our day. It's set apart from all the other concerns and worries we may have. But yet we come here to focus upon God. So another verse to help us understand reverence towards God and who He is is Psalm chapter 8. Psalm 8, verses 3 through 5. We're again reminded of who God is, what He has done. Remind us that He is the Creator. Psalm 8, 3 through 5. This helps us know why it is that we ought to be reverenced 
be reverent towards God. Psalm 8, 3-5, it reads this, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you, would, that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. So really, when you look at Psalm 8, 3 through 5, you can go back to Genesis, and you think about those six days of creation. We're reminded of all the wonderful things that God created, that God put in place. That in the beginning, there was God and His Spirit upon the waters. There it was, and God created light. Before that, it was just God Himself. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But upon His creation, the world comes into existence. Upon his create, upon him speaking, uh, comes the sun, the moon, the stars. Thus comes the plants, the bushes, those things uh, that provide nutrition for individuals, uh, of providing the animals, and that they would be provided for with the streams of water, that they would have a way to eat with the bushes and the trees, those type things providing the fruit for those animals. And then that God who takes care of the flowers, the God who takes care of the animals, is considering is considered of you on day six. Not only did he create those animals, the cattle and type, but he created us, he created mankind in his own image. So it is. God is wonderful. So it is that we ought to uh, treat him as such. We ought to humble ourselves while exalting God. And that's what it is to, to be showing reverence to Him, to show Him the honor and glory that He deserves. God is the creator over all life. He's the overseer over everything, having been there from the beginning. That this God would stop and listen to our prayers, it ought to bring us to our knees. And again, we already talked a bit this morning about prayer and, and that He would listen to us. When we think about all that God is in control, when we think of all that He had put in place, give Him glory, why we ought to honor Him, respect Him. Once we come to that realization, perhaps it will cause us to be joyful. Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5. It has this to say. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. All you land, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him, and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations." If we're going to be in the presence of God, if we're going to have a, a holy time, set apart time for Him, and as we come to worship, we ought to be glad to do such things. We ought to be able to have a joyful shout. We ought to be able to sing. We know in the New Testament it talks about those who are uh, weak, those who are sick ought to pray, but those who are joyful are to sing. And so as we come to God, we can, again, go to God with the thanksgivings, those blessings in our lives. We ought not to be dragging either ourselves or dragging others to services to come in with a frown on our face, uh, 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 this being an, an action that we just have to do. But we really tr- should have that uh, mentality, that attitude of this is something we get to do. We get to honor God. We get to glorify God. We get to praise God, to sing to Him, to lift our prayers before God and study His Word. We ought to be joyful for who God is. This verse it reminds us that God is our creator, that he's our protector and our provider. There it says we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So you think about God in Psalm 23, again, lends that language to, to God being our, our shepherd. Uh, Jesus would talk about being the good shepherd. A shepherd is one who protects. A shepherd is someone who provides for his sheep. And we are the Lord's sheep. We are God's sheep. And He provides for us, protects us. It ought to cause us to celebrate. It ought to cause us to rejoice. The fact that we get to come and focus upon Him should cause us to celebrate. It ought to, again, be able to be joyful that we're gathered together and that we're not alone 
in our belief in God, that we're not the only ones who believe that God created the world in six days, that we're not by ourselves in believing that he sent his son for us, but yet we're gathered here. And again, there are some by live stream, there are some by phone call, but yet we're able to gather in such of a way to study God. We're able to, to set aside time to focus upon God and how wonderful he is to us. I share one more verse with you about being joyful. Psalm 122, verse 1. We looked at this verse last week, but it's important for us, again, as we talk about the concept, the idea that you and I would be joyful, joyful in our worship, that we would be glad. Psalm 122, verse 1. Psalm 122, verse 1. It says this, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That doesn't sound like someone that's being dragged. That's not, that doesn't sound like someone that has to go to services, one who has to set time aside to honor God, but one who is truly glad, overjoyed to worship God, to be united with God, be able to connect with God. We perhaps talked recently about the example of Daniel. And again, to think about Daniel and his circumstances, that there was a law passed where they weren't able to honor God for the time, that they were only supposed to give honor to the king. And yet, as was his habit, as was his custom, Daniel went and prayed three times to the Lord because Daniel was glad to do such, was glad to honor God. And so it is we ought to be glad. We ought to be joyful that we get to honor God. When we have the opportunity to worship, we should feel the same way as Psalm 122 verse 1 points out of being glad. That opportunity to come and gather. Truly, truly a wonderful thing for us. So it is as we come to worship, we ought to be reverent. We ought to think about who we are as God's creation. We ought to remind ourselves that we are the sheep belonging to God, that he's our creator, protector, provider. We ought to give him glory and honor. But not only is that the case, but we ought to also be joyful. Those things ought to cause us to rejoice, to be thankful, to know that he is with us. We have many examples in God's word where God is with his people. And God is with us today. But lastly, I share with you then in John 4, 23 through 24, if you turn there. That as God's people, as people who are going to be worshiping God and Him alone, we ought to be obedient. And so we'll see the words of Jesus in John 4, 23-24. Jesus speaking to the woman at the well. This woman is a Samaritan woman. But Jesus talks about the true worshipers, as we'll see here. John 4, 23-24. It says this. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. They were in a discussion, Jesus and the Samaritan woman were in a discussion about location, where one must worship. But what Jesus tells this woman it will not come to be so important of where you worship, but of how you worship, of that you worship in spirit and truth. Worship is more than just the right location. And so again, you can think about our circumstances. You can think about what's taken place uh, of how we're just now coming back into this location here in Somerset. And that there are still those, again, meeting with us by phone call, still meeting with us from their own homes. But yet they've set aside that time to worship God in spirit and truth. They're focused on God, and they're doing the things that are pleasing to God. For almost a year, we were able to worship from our homes in different counties. Some of us live in Perry County, some of us outside of Perry County. But we're all still able to worship God. Worship is also not just an outward action. The God's people in the Old Testament, that's where they would sometimes get that wrong. They had their list of commands. They had the list of things they had to do. And so when they went to go and give an offering, they did that. They went before to the priest. They gave an offering. But it wasn't the best 
offering. It wasn't what should have been given to honor and glorify God. They were holding things back. They were keeping things back for themselves. So it's not just about the right action. But worship is both body and spirit, and it must be engaged to, must be engaged to worship God acceptably. That, that spirit being that focus, that intent of why, that motivation on why you are worshiping, and then that truth of being what it is we accomplish, what it is that we do here, such as the praying, such as the singing, the studying of God's word, the opportunity to remind ourselves of the Lord's death. As we do those things, and as we have an opportunity to give back, it's those things we do because we have examples for those things in God's Word. We see other Christians, early Christians, doing those very things. And so it is, as we come to worship, we must keep these things in mind. That as we worship, and not just this evening, uh, and, 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 but hopefully not just something that's remembered next week and forgotten, but as we worship continuously, as long as the Lord gives us the opportunity to worship Him in this life, these are the things we ought to remember about worship. That we are to worship God reverently. We ought to humble ourselves before God. We ought to glorify, honor Him, understanding who He is, and we can know those things better from His Word. That as we come and are gathered together, as we have a time set aside to worship God, it is a joyful occasion. It's a time of gladness. A time to encourage one another, as is said before. But a time just you can come before God to honor and give prayers, to give a lip service through song. It's truly a joyful occasion. And let our worship be done in obedience to God. Again, having to understand who He is, Understand that this is a joyful time and occasion for us. Maybe do it with obedience to God, honoring Him. Worship ought to show respect to God. And again, as was stated just before in the last point, worship requires both the physical effort and spiritual focus. It is not enough to worship God in spirit or truth. If you think about that passage in John 4, it tells us clearly He demands both. He's seeking for individuals, true worshipers, to worship Him in spirit and truth. That we must, that language that is used by Jesus in John 4. It's not enough to just be here in person, to go through the actions. It's not just enough to have the right attitude. There are people out in this world that have a mindset, a focus on God, but yet they worship Him in, in any way they would like to. But if you're going to be a true worshiper of God, someone that God is seeking... To worship Him, it must be done in spirit and truth. And so may we be found doing just that. Again, it is encouraging to see you here. It's encouraging to know there's, uh, I believe last week no one was on the phone call. This week we have at least, hopefully a few. A few are watching the live stream, being able to worship with us in that way. It's encouraging. And I hope this is helpful to you. I hope this lesson has been a blessing to you. This service has been a blessing to you. If you are struggling as a Christian, if you are someone who needs prayers of the congregation, needs prayers from brothers and sisters in Christ, as we are gathered here this evening, we have that opportunity in person to pray for you, to encourage you. If we need to study God's word with you, please let Dave, Mike, or myself know. We'd be happy to do that with you. If that's you, we can help you in any way. We ask that you come as we stand and sing the invitation song. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy word was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I Just as 
sisters as we worship. Amen. Let us give thanks. Heavenly Father, we come to you now as we are about to close this service, Father. We pray, Father, that everything that has been said here this evening will be in accordance with thy will. And Father, we have those which are on our hearts heavy because of sickness or loss of a loved one. We just pray, Father, for them and be with us, Father, as we go th through this week before us that we will say and do and walk in the way that you would have us to. And we know, Father, that we are only human and we do err in thy way. And Father, we just humbly beg your forgiveness of this and give us the strength, Father, that we can live our lives better and closer to you. Forgive us, Father, of our sins. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. Just a couple of things I'd like to remind you of next Sunday is uh, when Ben Redinger will be here, and that'll be for the Bible study and the worship service Sunday morning. So uh, please plan to be here to uh, hear his update on the mission in India. I failed to mention this morning that we had uh, some drywall work done uh, Friday and Saturday this week by a guy by the name of Chad Moyer from New Lexington. And when we talked about it in a business meeting, we all kind of jumped at the price because none of us really like to do drywall work. But there are, and I'd almost challenge you to find them in this, in, in this room, 
there are eight places that he fixed. The worst one was over here by this window to my left, uh, above and below. But there are other, I think, a, Scott's that right, I think there's seven other seams that he worked on in, in the auditorium here. Plus, <laughs> yeah, plus the, and there may have been more, plus the uh, three classrooms, the ceilings were, was really coming down. And he did that for $350, which we thought was just a bargain, a real bargain. And he did a good job. So we appreciate him doing that. And uh, just wanted to mention that to you. Uh, yes? Yes, I talked to him this afternoon. He wanted to know if, if people were satisfied with this job. And I said, yes, I heard nothing but praise. But he does do other handyman type work. Uh, he does some concrete work, some electrical work, some plumbing work, that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, if you uh, need some of that done and want to uh, uh, hire him uh, to do that, I'll get you his phone number. Uh, he's worked for Bob already and uh, done some work there. And I think that you would agree that he did some good work for you guys. We'll do some more. <clears throat> and he, uh, he lives right across the street from Bob up on the hill there on Elizabeth Street where they live. But anyway, anything else that needs to be announced this evening? Dave, if you want to make mention about Tara's address, if anyone wants to send her and her husband a card. But they do plan to be here Wednesday, is what I heard. Okay. Tara and uh, Jeremy uh, Lane, uh, who have been here the last two Sunday mornings, we have their address, and I know... Scott, you gave it to me, but is it posted someplace? Not yet. No, okay. But she has been here before, a couple of years ago. I met her uh, probably two, three years ago when I was trying to get Tim Waltz into the uh, Fairview facility, and uh, she helped me do that. And she did come here after that, but um, it's been a while, but now they've been back, and it sounds like they're really interested in uh, attending here. So uh, if you'd like to send them a card, we'll get you the address. Uh, Seems like there was something else I wanted to mention in regard to that, but I can't think of what it was. Oh, I know. Uh, I wanted to ask if anybody on the phone call if there was any questions that you guys might have had. And I don't know who all is on the phone call, so you have to bear with me. Larry and Sue are here. Larry and Sue's on on the call. I know Ann was on the call, and I don't know about uh, others, but uh, we're glad that you're out there as well. So if there's if there's anything else, uh, we're dismissed for this evening. And thank you for those on the phone call. We'll talk to you later.